Hello again, everyone. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles back again, this time to review another album. This time it was Craig's Choice. The band is Transvision Vamp with the album Little Magnets vs. The Bubble of Babel. And uh, that came out in 1991, so we're going to give our opinions of that. And uh, if you've heard the album, hopefully you'll give us your opinion in the comments section. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're the right. Vinyl Community Gunkles. I'm Robert mm -hmm. Fithin. Along with Mike from Hubtoons, Richard from Calvin Wazoo, and ladies and gentlemen, the man most voted to say her voice is perfection sometime in this episode, Craig from Craig's Vinyl Plethora. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> we love you. My glasses Craig. are slipping <laughs> down my, my face here. And and my nose itches, and they're actually very dirty. I have new glasses. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to look at them without my glasses on. That's not going to work. Yeah, they don't have those big frames at the bottom. Oh, they're anymore. beautiful. I didn't even notice. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't see up close anymore. Oh. <laughs> because I found out that I have to have two different pairs of glasses now, like Fred Sanford. I have to have oh. a pair to walk around in, and I have to have a different pair to read in. So that's going to be you, Do you yeah. put them on top of your head and on your eye, or do you have a chain that goes around your neck? I'm going to have to have, I'm going to get one of those chains. That'd be <laughs> awesome. That yeah. would be yeah. awesome. Just make one in your crafting room. Yeah, so. You'll need to have an extra pair in the car, too. For, yeah. Because you look, in a, look down the road, and then you look at the dashboard, you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> right, yeah. So, fun I times. Used, I used to keep reading glasses in my car until I got trifocals. Oh, I am not digress. getting the progr I can't do the different focal lenses. I can't, I can't. either. Uh, no. I, I, I I used to try, but I I just can't. You Give can't me a head. To it. All right, Transvision Vamp. Who is first? Well, I could go first here on this 1991 little 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 record that I found out that um, apparently there's no U.S. pressing of the record. Uh, so I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, it's you can get there were it was released on CD, I guess, mm -hmm. in the U.S., but no, no vinyl release. Um, and one of the things that I noticed, it's like you know, here we've had a couple uh, records that we listen to that I hear a really strong Jesus and Mary Chain influence. Um, I just really pick up, especially. Uh, especially with this record, but I also get this Velvet Underground vibe uh, coming uh, with a couple of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, so the individual songs. It opens with "I Just Want to Be with You." Um, it's I got uh, wrote down, yeah, Jesus and Mary Chain feel, but it's got like this pop chorus that uh, goes on. So uh, her voice is. Um, interesting to me it it's it's it sounds good the musicians playing on this record i think are really really good they're very very skilled um her singing is is good uh but the lyrics to the songs um i don't know they they, they didn't seem um all that ex all that they didn't match the quality of the music that I was hearing. Hmm. Seemed like a lot of the songs were kind of um, songs that had been done before from a from the lyric lyrical point of view. But the but the playing, I mean, like ain't uh, ain't no rules. The second song, it's just got this really slinky, skanky groove that um, I really love. In fact, most of my notes are about the music. I didn't write very much about you know the songs. Uh, that, that she was singing. Um, if looks could kill, the opening groove, to me, was like this is honky tonk women. You know, um, I don't know if they were, you know, this it's, dan, 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 you know, it's just got that honky tonk groove uh, going in uh, with the opening. Uh, every little thing, it's got like this techno rhythm going on. And then they start overlaying like this disco sound, um, and that that intensifies, and then it this rock beat goes in there. So I really like the way the song was kind of put together. But again, I kind of felt like 
lyrically, there was wasn't a whole lot that, that I remember about it. Twangy wig out. Um, it seemed like uh, it made me think of really early stones, like out of your head stones, but still with that Jesus and Mary chain. It wasn't to me twangy, and it wasn't a wig out, but it was very spacey and psychedelic. Um, kind of a sound to it. Don't believe the type. Um, still Jesus and Mary Chain coming through with me. I just, I, it was like, uh, but but they were from, they're from England, uh, right? And so this album yeah. was 1991, was it? Was that it? Yeah, 1991. So that's One. right about the same era that Jesus and Mary Chain are, are producing. So I'm sure there was a lot of influence on there. Uh, but don't believe the type also had a Patty Smith kind of feel to it to me. Um, then Pressure Times. This is what I wrote. Steeler, Steeler's Wheel melding with Jesus and Mary Chain. <laughs> and just, you are dropping some names here, Richard. And I'm not picking up any of that on <laughs> well, any of these names. This is what I, I mean, was, what? It, Rolling Stones? Stones? This is this has got uh, the uh, Pressure Times. It's got a great rhythm for dancing and tripping. <laughs> Um, it's the second best song on the album, um, to, in in my opinion. Uh, it was it was very good. Uh, Crawl out your window. Uh, to me, it was a good song, but it didn't fit. It really, to me, didn't fit with all the other songs. It seemed out of place. Um, it it was like a Midwest rock ballad, to me. You know, something that John Cougar Mellencamp would do, or something like that. Uh, I would was getting that. <laughs> uh, she put a spell on, uh, you put a spell on me. Um, we're back to the Jesus and Mary chain with noise, but it's the best song on the album, I think. Um, I like that one the best. Um, and then Back on My Knees Again is a great closer for the album. Um, I, I really uh, thought that was really, really good for the closer. So yeah, there's musically these guys playing the instruments and all that um, are are good. They're getting lots of to me very interesting and good sounds, groovy sounds, m melodic sounds with their instruments. Um, her voice uh, fits kind of with what they're doing really really well, um, but the songs to me were kind of meh uh, in terms of the lyrics and stories. There wasn't anything really new happening with the lyrics. It was kind of like songs that I'd heard before and some other, you know, just said differently. Um, but uh, yeah, the musicianship was really, really good. I'm going to give it uh, three and a half rainbows. Okay. Uh, well, the reason that Crawl Out Your Window probably sounded different was because it's a cover song. It's a Bob Dylan song. Um, yeah. So that might be why oh, it sounded right. like yes. John Mellencamp. But uh, so yeah, um, I didn't get any of that. What he, what, anything he was just. <laughs> I did not get <laughs> Rolling Stones and Patti Smith. It, it was struck me when you said Jesus and Mary Chain because I thought you were going to say exactly what I thought uh, when I heard it. But it wasn't Jesus and Mary Chain. It was Jesus Jones. This album is totally 1990, 91. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, you hear this oh, yeah. and it's like, bam, you are right there in now, those two years. It, they are from the UK, but I don't think they're from Manchester, but they definitely have the Madchester sound of the early 90s. This is the Soup Dragons. Uh, I mean, I like the Soup Dragons a lot more, but the, the, but it's Jesus Jones. It's Jesus Jones with a female singer. <clears throat> Um, it's the same drum sound, a lot of drum looping stuff, but then they throw in the actual drums with it. It's, it's the Manchester sound of the early nineties. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the record company was not going to originally release this. I found out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't um, want to go with this record, but I thought it was okay. It wasn't anything earth shattering. It wasn't anything horrible. It was just kind of there. I mean, it's like pop music from England from 1990 and 91. I mean, it's. That's exactly what it is. You can sort of hear those drum loops. The the cabbage patch and things started almost. We're gonna be there in like a year, but we're not quite there yet. 
you can hear that sort of creeping in. You can hear in in the in the box production sort of creeping in. We're not quite there yet because it's 1990, 91. But yeah, Jesus Jones with a female lead singer. That's what this. That's the music that I got out of this. Not not Patti Smith and the Rolling Stones and. So when I say that, I'm not saying that they're being reductive or they're copying. It's just there's a to me there was a feel to the music that matched the feel sometimes that I yeah it's whatever you don't have to <laughs> so yeah I will give this um wow I don't know um I mean I guess three rainbows just because but that makes it sound like I really like anyway no three, three doesn't sound like you really like it <laughs> No, oh, yeah. It was very middle of the road. It was very much a 1990-91 typical. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 it has a very dated sound, um, which isn't always horrible. I mean, a dated sound can be good, you know. Um, I this is when I listen to it, and this is exactly why I listen to every one of our album picks three times, at least three times. Because the first time I the first time I put this on, I was in my car driving along, morning commute, and I I cranked it up. I really liked it the first time I listened to it. I loved I, I the first like four, maybe even five songs. I was grooving to it, and I was like, yeah, Craig, this this is great. I really dug it, and like you said, Richard, the music, like the the music really kept me interested. And then I got I got I was coming home from work, and I put it on again, and I was like. Okay, it does fade towards the, you know, the first five, four or five songs are really, I, I really enjoyed the second half of the record. I, maybe I don't like it as much. The third time I listened to it, I was like, okay, I don't like her vocals at all. <laughs> they just kind of, I really don't, sorry, Craig. <laughs> I, I just, I, they were fine for, like I said, four or five songs. And then I, like a whole album of it, I really... I, I think this would have been a much better record with a much better singer. That's that's just how I, after listening to it three times. Yeah. And I just, I think if, if this, and I get it, 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 and that's probably why it felt dated. It had that 1990, 91, 92 feel to it. I mean, man, I really think if there had been a dynamic female singer to this, like somebody with some pipes, I think this could be a really really good record the music on it's terrific I, I love the instruments and just the way they play and the arrangements of the songs I, I that part of it I really would really like um but yeah I mean that and that's why we listen to these things three four times you know and yeah that's the way I left it maybe I need to listen to it more I don't know I don't know um uh, it's probably an expensive record. You know, is it a record like if I stumbled across it in a, you know, a bin and it was, you know, 20 bucks, I'd grab it. I probably would. You know, listen to it. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe if it was 10. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably, I'm guessing Craig's going to tell us it's like a hundred dollar record. Well, I don't know if it's that much, but I, and I don't remember what I paid for it. I have a German pressing of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give, I'm going to, because I really did enjoy that very first impression, and you know they always say you know first impression, but I'm going to give it three rainbows. Um, okay. Yeah, I really did. I, I, I yeah. Okay, I won't ramble. What are you drinking? Dear God, brisk tea. <laughs> it looked like a, it looked like a two liter when you put it like up a, right next like to the camera. Richard, did you say what your <laughs> rainbows were? Three and, a half. three and a half. Oh, okay. I just, you know, wasn't paying attention, I guess. Um, so, yes. Little Magnets, the Transmission Vamp. So, it's another one that I just have very fond. It was very important to me in 1991. Um, I still, I mean, I listened to this. I hadn't listened to it in a really long time. Uh, this was one of the albums that I had searched for because I had to have them in my collection. This is their third and final record. First two albums are more pop. Um, they're the ones that do the cover of um, Tell That Girl to Shut Up. I think that was on their first record called Pop Art. 
Um, so they released albums in 88, 89, and 91, and then they were done. Um, the, yes, the record label uh, did not release the album in the UK until after the band had actually broke up. Um, and it was only released on CD and cassette in the U S. Um, <clears throat> Wendy James's voice is not perfection, but I love it. And I think to me, it blends well with this music. And then she later did, she has like four or five solo records. She was in another band called Racine. Um, for her. the ugh, keyboardist. I think is it the keyboardist was in X Ray Specs. Right. Yeah, um, I, I saw that he was with really Agent yeah. Orange. Agent Orange also. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. Wow. But he wasn't on this record very much, was he? No. But um, yeah. but yeah, Wendy like her first solo record, Elvis Costello wrote almost all the songs for it. She co-wrote. They co-wrote songs together. She met his guitarist or something like that and and then he was like yeah i'll introduce you and then they ended up doing this record it's actually really great i think um but i just want to be with you is the first it was the single that was released off the record and um i just heard that song i probably 120 minutes or something like that on mtv or whatever and i heard it and i was just like i i have to get this so i don't even i know i had the cd i don't remember how i probably had to go to Phoenix or something like that to get it because no way I could find it where I lived. But um, I just have such fond memories of, of the record. And the songs are fantastic. I love the kind of 60s vibe that you have going through it, especially on like Twingy Wig Out and every little thing. Um, Back on My Knees Again is the closer, of course, and that's probably one of my favorite songs in the record. I There's not a song I don't like, though. I love the entire record is it a perfect album no but the, again it just it's that no, nostalgia that just kind of brings me back to a moment in time where i was just really i was searching for new music i was searching for things people weren't listening to um they weren't very big they i mean they definitely the first two records did way better in the uk than this one i mean obviously, oh really they, yeah the oh yeah they were very popular um, her voice, I, she definitely does that kind of breathy, whiny, I guess, a, a little more on this record than the other two. Um, but I just, I, I, I respect Wendy as an artist, especially if you listen to some of her later stuff where she goes into more like an acoustic vibe and um, just, sorry, Daisy's snoring. Did Daisy just fart? No, she was snoring. <laughs> the, I'm like... You sure? <laughs> that sounded like a fart. I, oh no, she's snoring. Or it was you. Might be my squeaky chair. Daisy, you snoring? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more I could say about the record, but um, I just can't think of, you know what I want to say, but I, I just wanted it to be mentioned. Um, you know, I love to to showcase those albums that were very important to me at a certain point, point in my life. It's still as, as wonderful to me today as when I heard it back in 1991. Yeah, okay, maybe it's a little dated, um, but I just get so happy when I hear it, and that's why, why I kind of wanted to just throw it out there. I'd been going to do it for a while, and well, that's exactly what we do this for. You know, you have an emotional attachment to that record. Richard has shown records that, you know, influenced him and where he is today in his life. I do the same thing. That's why we do this. So, you know, it's they're not all going to be five rainbows every week. Oh, you know? no. We're not oh, all no. going to love them, you know. And it, it, it's interesting. That's a that's a bit. I've never heard of them, uh, you know, and it's good. That's why yeah, we I hadn't listen. heard of them either. That's interesting that you would say that that was um, on 120 Minutes in one of those bands that you... You know, you're trying to get cool music that isn't really popular or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing the same thing around that time. Well, mine was more like 89, 90. And that's how I ended up with the Soup Dragons and the Happy Mondays. And I'm surprised I never heard of them because they're right around they're the same time. And they're yeah. the, I mean, yeah. it's like a year later, but it's the same type of music. Jesus yes. Jones. I got that CD. That was the first check I ever wrote. 
it was oh. for Jesus Jones and Nirvana's Nevermind. And uh, I thought Jesus Jones was like a real hip, you know, like the Manchester stuff. You did know, did you like, like uh, Jesus Jones better than Nevermind? No, I rem- I got a CD <laughs> home and I'm like, this really is not that good. Ned's man. Atomic <laughs> Dustbin. Really was a- Ned's Atomic Dustbin. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Gray Cell Green was my favorite song. On oh, that. yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, all that stuff. And this would have fit right into that. And I probably would have been more into it at that time. And I don't mind her voice. I liked her voice. <laughs> I don't think it was perfection. But... <laughs> and I didn't say it was either. <laughs> But um, I'm giving it four and a half rainbows. So I think that puts it at 13. Right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. It was nine and a half and then plus four and a half. So that's uh, no so math. <laughs> My, so I hard. cannot do the simplest math anymore. It's, it's, it's the 14. Simplest 14 rainbows. Math, 14. I cannot do it. 14. Nobody. I just, a, I just did a record show. <laughs> um, where I had to stand there and add up, you know, you know, I you didn't mean, take I, a calculator not, with you. <laughs> I had to get it out. Yeah. I couldn't add like, and I, I'm not pricing my records like five ninety nine and four fifty. They're all just dollars, five dollars, you, you, you fourteen like dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever. And I couldn't. Somebody would come up with five records, and they were all different. You know, five dollars, eight dollars, twenty dollars, twenty two dollars, and I could not. I'm like, okay. You start over here. Okay, 20 and 22. That's 42 plus 8. Okay, now we're in an even Carry number. Carry the one. 54 That's 30. That's okay. You know, that's 50. We're good I there. Count on my fingers. You know, nobody over 50 count on. Oh, my you're God. Not, I am losing alone. simple addition skills you're as I get alone. older. Sick an abacus addition. with you next time and then really freak people abacus. out. Abacus. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, you're not alone. How embarrassing to stand there and be like, oh, okay, what's totally eight fine. plus seven? Fifteen? <laughs> There's a reason we have calculators on oh, our Plus list. another five? Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, that's 20. Yeah. That's easy. 15 yeah. plus five. That's easy. Nobody 20, does 20. Math. I get 20. <laughs> and then you have to make change. I can do fives Everything. and nines, right. but yes. sevens and eights? Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, walk into a grocery store and what if, if the cashier nowadays... They can't make change anymore. If it's and not, I used on... to make fun of people for that. Like I was in this yeah. store where this this idiot was in there. He, this kid yeah. had to be like sixteen years old. Couldn't yeah. even. Couldn't add make change. That. Yeah, be careful what you make fun of. Yep, it's me now. Mm-hmm, because then you turn into that person. Yes. Yeah. Soon I'll <clears> be <throat> a Pet Sounds fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my record is next. It's Asia. Yes. What uh, record is that? It's going to be. PJ Harvey, Polly Jean Harvey, to bring you my love. Is that the one with the something by the water, little fish down by little the river? Little fish, big fish swimming in the water. Come back here, man. To bring me, water. to bring me my love. What? To bring you my love. To bring love. you my love. To bring you my love. But that's ninety four. Five. This is ninety five. She didn't have anything between that and Rid of Me, right? That follows Rid of Me, or is there one? This came right, uh, yeah, this was right before Rid of Me. Yeah. No, that's after Rid of, Rid of Me's like nine. This is after Rid of Me. Three, Rid, yeah. Okay. Rid of Me's before, and then, uh, uh-huh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. All right, so we've got that coming up. We've got the first aid kit playlist battle coming up. Ooh, and we've got our gonna... tops and bottoms. Yep. So much going on here in the So Viola. much here in Gunkle Land. Gunkle Land. <laughs> it's now Gunkle Land. It's Gunkle Land. So hopefully you'll join us for all of that and so much more. <laughs> yeah. We are the Vinyl Community Gunkles. Thank you so much for watching. Now, tell us what you thought of the Transvision Vamp album. Are you going to run out and buy it? Did you even listen to it? Did you hear Patty Smith in there somewhere? <laughs> or Steeler's Wheel. Or Steeler's Wheel. Or did you hear more yeah. Jesus Jones and Soup Dragons? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. I'm Robert Fithin, along with... Uh, Richard at... Uh... <laughs> Craig's uh, vinyl plethora. <laughs> and Mike at Hub Tunes. Thank you again. Mickey. So guys. much for watching. <laughs> Appreciate you. Somebody slipped me a Mickey. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs>
Uh, I slipped it in. That's funny. Bit. 